Endometrial Cancer in Young Patient, Role of Conservative Management. This topic was presented during National Gynecology Oncology Conference 2015 held in Kuala Lumpur. In this presentation, we will be going through the following topics. Overview of endometrial cancer, endometrial cancer in young patient, indication for conservative management, type of conservative management of endometrial cancer, suitable candidate for conservative treatment, importance of counseling before treatment, reliability of pre-treatment endometrial biopsy and imaging techniques, conservative medical treatment, conservative surgical treatment, monitoring post-treatment, when to consider failed conservative treatment, reproductive and oncology outcomes, and conclusion. Endometrial carcinoma is the most common gynec cancer in developed countries. In Malaysia and other developing countries, endometrial cancer is the third most common gynec cancer. Data from the published journal worldwide reported that 3-5% to of patients were diagnosed at the age of younger than 40. However, our local data showed higher percentage of young patients. Studies have shown that younger patients has higher prevalence of history of infertility as compared to older patients. It is a current trend that many women decided to defer childbearing. For example, in 1970, only 1% of women gave birth to their first child after the age of 35. But now, 1 in 12 or almost 10% of women giving birth to their first child at the, at the same age. Therefore, I foresee that fertility is going to become a major issue in this group of patients and poses a major treatment dilemma to gynae oncologists. Okay, this is the data from my center, Gynae Oncology Unit Hospital, Sultana Bahia. We managed to capture, with the courtesy of Dr. Lee Sojo, 8 years data from 2007 until 2015. We have a total of 264 cases of carcinoma of endometrium, and 82% was type 1, 14.7% type 2, and interestingly, 3% has mixed histology. 65% of type 1 endometrial cancer presented as stage 1, compared to only 10.6% in type 2 cancer. As I have mentioned earlier, we have much larger proportion of our patients younger than 40, which was 23%, compared to less than 5% elsewhere. Out of 142 cases of type 1 endometrial cancer, 32% of them were stage 1A and grade 1 disease, which is type 1, stage 1A and grade 1, or approximately 26% from total number of endometrial cancer, type 1 and type 2. From 2007, we have treated 6 patients with conservative hormonal treatment. We have successfully treated 5 of them and 1 patient failed and required surgical treatment. There are two types of endometrial cancer. Both have different characteristic and pathological background. Majority in about 80 to 85% of patients presented as type 1 endometrial cancer as compared to only about 25% type 2. However, 40% of all death due to endometrial cancer is attributed to type 2 endometrial cancer. We know that type 2 is more aggressive and carry poorer prognosis. My definition of conservative treatment for cancer is treatment modality, often a not a standard treatment, that do not involve in the removal of affected organ with or without preservation of its function. The standard primary treatment for endometrial cancer is extrafacial hysterectomy, bilateral sulfingo-ophrectomy, pelvic and para-aortic lymphadenectomy. However, in certain conditions, standard treatment could not be offered to patients for several reasons. The indication for conservative treatment are fertility preserving, when patient is not surgically fit, and when patient refuse standard primary treatment. For today's presentation, I will just focus on only on fertility preserve treatment. Fertility preservation is the most common indication for conservative treatment in young patients with early endometrial cancer. We know that uh, there is a trend of increasing number of women delaying their childbearing, and many patients were diagnosed with endometrial cancer at time when they decide to have their first child. Therefore, this topic is very relevant and important. 
The most critical issue that we have to address before offering conservative treatment is how to select the most suitable candidate for such treatment. Unlike benign condition, cancer in life is life-threatening. Wrong selection of patients may cause failed treatment, risk of recurrent and poorer survival. Selected patient must be a low-risk a patient and the tumor must be sensitive to the treatment given. For that purpose, understanding the behavior of the tumor and the prognostic factors are mandatory. A limb node metastasis is known as the surrogate markers for survival. Many studies have shown that the risk of limb node metastasis was significantly higher in type 2 endometrial cancer compared to type 1. Limb node metastasis is also more common in grade 3 tumor and when there is more than 50% of myo-invasion. Apart from that, loss of ER and PR and presence of mutation of P53 tumor suppressor gene were also associated with higher risk of limb node metastasis and poorer survival. Double negative ER and PR was found to be an independent prognostic factor for limb node metastasis. Data from other studies have shown that tumor grading and depth of invasion are an important prognostic factor. Grade 1 tumor had 5 years survival of 86.8% compared to only 58.3% in grade 3 tumor. The risk of a pelvic node metastasis is only 3% in grade 1 as compared to 18% in grade 3 tumor. Patient with more than 50% myo, myometrial invasion has a 18% risk of pelvic limb node metastasis as compared to 4% in superficial myo invasion. The overall risk of pelvic and paraiotic limb node metastasis is 6% if this patient has more than 50% myometrial invasion. Conservative management for grade 2, grade 2 endometrial cancer have been tried, but the result was not encouraging. There were few case reports showing that a conservative treatment for grade 2 disease is possible, but with higher risk of recurrence and 50% of cases required hysterectomy after fail to respond. We know that in type 1 endometrial cancer, ER and PR protein are overexpressed and can be measured. The level of receptors adversely correlate with the tumor grade. 85% of grade 1 endometrial cancer demonstrated high level of ER and PR compared to only 13% in grade 3 tumor. Tumor with high level of ER and PR give highest response rate to hormonal treatment compared to a PR status. ER status alone did not add significant prognostic information. Therefore, PR status seemed to be more important. Limb vascular space invasion or LVSI is known as important adverse prognostic factor as reported from pool analysis of PORTEC 1 and 2 trial. Substantial LVSI was found to be an independent prognostic factor for regional recurrence, distant metastasis and overall survival. This evaluation was done on hysterectomy specimen and difficult to be done on sample taken from the pipel or cure touch. However, please do not ignore this if reported by histopathologists. The other important issue that I would like to point out is the risk of synchronous ovarian cancer and occult ovarian metastasis in patients with endometrial cancer. Studies have shown that the overall risk of synchronous endometrial and ovarian cancer in young age, younger age women is much higher than in elderly age group. Some studies quoted the risk of up to 29%. In stage 1 disease, the overall risk of synchronous ovarian cancer is around 5%. Bearing in mind that 15% of ovarian metastasis was diagnosed in grossly normal looking ovary. Endometrial cancer could also be part of inherited cancer syndrome such as Lynch syndrome or HNPCC. Please remember the rule of 10% in HNPCC. 10% of younger patients with endometrial cancer has HNPCC and the risk of ovarian carcinoma is 10% in HNPCC. Based on the information presented in the previous slides, I think everyone agreed that conservative treatment for carcinoma of endometrium cannot be taken lightly and cannot be offered as an alternative to surgical treatment if there is no valid indication. 
This fertility preserving approach may only be considered when the patient insists. This is one of the most important information that must be conveyed to a patient during counseling. The treatment modality that we are going to offer must fulfill two main principles. That is, it is safe and effective, and this treatment do not adversely affect the future fertility. Based on the evidence presented in previous slide and consistent with the data and studies published by many authors, the suitable candidate for conservative treatment for patients with endometrial carcinoma must fulfill seven criteria as shown in this slide. Number one is patient must be counseled thoroughly. She must fully understand about the treatment, follow-up and potential complication. It should be a type 1 endometrial cancer, most commonly endometroid histology, stage 1 tumor, grade 1 tumor and no limb vascular space invasion. The fourth criteria is localized lesion with no myo invasion and cervical extension. It should be receptor positive and uh, ovarian pathology has been excluded. And of course, the last is there is no contraindication for the treatment. As the selection of patient in, is considered the most important step, Pre-treatment diagnostic workup is extremely important because incomplete and inaccurate pre-treatment diagnostic workup may lead to selection of wrong patients. So, what are the pre-treatment diagnostic workup? First is endometrial biopsy and histology, which should be evaluated by an experienced pathologist, especially in assessing the grade of tumor. ER and PR status are strongly recommended. Radiological assessment of tumor is extremely important and should be done by an experienced radiologist. The radiologist should be able to diagnose myoinvasion, cervical extension, and ovarian metastasis with reasonable accuracy. Imaging technique is also important to assess limb node metastasis and solid organ involvement. Blood level for CA125 should be done because elevated CA125 has significant correlation with higher stage, higher grade, increased depth of my of myometry invasion and more advanced disease. CA125 is also important for detection of ovarian metastasis. As I have mentioned earlier, pre-treatment diagnostic workup is the most important step in the conservative management of endometrial cancer. However, it is known that pre-treatment assessment, especially an early stage endometrial cancer, is often difficult and has a significant limitations. Endometrial sampling technique that we choose must be most reliable. So the sample obtained from the uterine cavity must represent the severity of lesion accurately. In order to obtain adequate sample, ideally entire uterine cavity should be sampled. The second limitation is related to interpretation of the histology by pathologists. Adequate sample does not always lead to accurate diagnosis. It is known that even with by experienced pathologists, there is significant inter-observer variation between pathologists, especially in differentiating between low-grade and higher-grade lesion. Third limitation is the accuracy of imaging techniques to assess the extent of the disease. We will learn about more about this in the next slide. Accuracy of the diagnosis is very much depend on two parameters. First is sampling adequacy. Not only the sample is enough for pathologists to make the diagnosis, but also how reliable is the sample represents endometrial pathology. And the second parameter is the accuracy of interpretation by pathologists. As far as sampling adequacy is concerned, I have come across many studies comparing between PPL, DDNC and hysteroscopy. Overall, endometrial curettage was found to provide higher rate of satisfaction and lower rate of tumor upgrading, which is 15% versus 27% compared to PPL. Interestingly, adding hysteroscopy did not improve the sensitivity of curettage. Therefore, I think uh, endometrial curettage is still the gold standard procedure for the diagnosis of endometrial cancer. Regarding the interpretation of the slide, pathologists must be experienced enough to make the diagnosis. 
Studies have shown that the accuracy of diagnosis in grade 1 lesion is around 65 to 74 percent, and it has a low positive predictive value ranging from 21 to 64 percent. So, even by experienced histopathologists, the accuracy is not that good. As I have mentioned earlier, study on the role of hysteroscopy in the diagnosis of endometrial cancer have shown that hysteroscopy did not increase the sensitivity of endometrial curettage, but there is a potential risk of intraperitoneal dissemination of endometrial cells with odd ratio of 1.78. This was shown by systemic review and meta-analysis by Polyzos and P reviewing more than 1,000 patients. They conclude that hysteroscopy in patients with endometrial cancer hint a risk of cancer cell dissemination within the peritoneal cavity. Um, however, this need prospective trial to correlate this risk and oncology outcome. This slide is to show that pathologists have more problem with low grade lesion than high grade lesion. The accuracy for grade 1 lesion is 64.5% with positive predictive value of 20.6%. The worrying issue when dealing with a pre-treatment histologic evaluation is the tendency to overdiagnosis and underdiagnosis. In the conservative management of endometrial cancer, I'm more worried about underdiagnosis, which may potentially lead to wrong selection and undertreatment. As you can see, 36% of tumor initially diagnosed as grade 1 lesion was found to be of higher grade lesion in hysterectomy specimen. 13 to 20 percent of patients with grade 1 endometrial cancer was found to have evidence of myoinvasion after hysterectomy. And rate of upgrading is higher with PPL than DDNC in some study. 27 percent versus 15 percent. After we have confirmed the diagnosis, the next step is to evaluate the extent of the disease by imaging techniques. There are three most common imaging modalities that we often use in cancer. There is a transvagina ultrasound, CT scan, and MRI. So the question now, which is the best imaging modality? As far as conservative management of endometrial cancer is concerned, we have to choose imaging modalities that give best result in assessment of local extension. Between TVS, CT scan, and MRI, Studies have shown that contrast-enhanced MRI is the most superior in demonstrating the depth of myoinvasion with accuracy of 85 to 94%. MRI is also useful to assess vital extension. Overall, accuracy of MRI in the staging of endometrial cancer is between 84 to 94%. After we have completed all diagnostic workup and we have selected the patient, the next question is, what is the type of conservative treatment that we should offer to this patient? I classified the conservative treatment of carcinoma of endometrium into medical, surgical, combined, and others. We begin with the most controversial first. Conservative surgical treatment for endometrial cancer had been reported, but the data is scanty. Endometrial curettage was considered not only diagnostic but also therapeutic. Response rate was reported, was reported as 80.8% when combined with hormonal therapy. The other conservative surgical treatment is hysteroscopic resection, which had been reported in few case series, including one reported by Maison, who successfully treated six patients using three, three steps hysteroscopic resection. However, as I have mentioned earlier, both curatage and hysteroscopic resection were followed with high-dose progestogen treatment, so it is more of combined approach rather than single modality. At present, there is no report of conservative surgical treatment alone without hormonal therapy. What about medical or systemic treatment in carcinoma of endometrium? There are long lists of systemic therapy which may be useful for conservative medical treatment and many of these agents were used as an adjuvant treatment or treatment for advanced and recurrent endometrial cancer. Systemic therapy can be classified into hormonal, non-hormonal and chemo-hormonal. I am not going to discuss all of these agents but I will only focus on hormonal treatment 
as this is the most uh, studied and most acceptable systemic therapy for type 1 endometrial cancer. Before we go to hormonal treatment, perhaps uh, just a short info regarding chemotherapy in endometrial cancer. Chemotherapy is mainly used to control distance disease. Traditionally, it was used to control the metastatic disease, but recently, it was found to be useful as an adjuvant treatment for stage 3 and stage 4 endometrial carcinoma. Based on the studies published in various journals, combined therapy is better than monotherapy. At present, based on GOG-177 and, and GOG-209, Paclitaxel and carboplatin should be the first choice of chemotherapy regime. However, the question now, is there any role of chemotherapy in conservative management of early endometrial cancer? My opinion is that chemotherapy is not suitable for conservative medical treatment for carcinoma of endometrium in young patients who wish to preserve their fertility due to these four main reasons. Number one is lack of clinical trial, poor response rate based on study on recurrence and advanced disease, potential chemotherapy-induced ovarian dysfunction and premature ovarian failure, failure. and number four is higher to sex toxicity. The only acceptable treatment for early type 1 endometrial cancer in young patients who wish to preserve their fertility is none other than hormonal treatment. All practicing gynecologists or gynae oncologists must be very clear that the decision to embark on hormonal treatment should be based on sufficient knowledge and skill of the caregivers, availability of multidisciplinary working team, and full agreement of patient after thorough counseling on advantage and disadvantages of the treatment. Patients have to be carefully informed that uh, fertility preserving approach is not a standard treatment. Moreover, these women must realize the low overall pregnancy rate which may partially be related to the origin of the disease, which is obesity, irregular menses, polycystic ovarian disease, eh, with a chronic end ovulation and infertility. Hormonal treatment for endometrial cancer have been reported since 1961. The most commonly used hormonal treatment is progestin or progestogen. The most common progestin is medroxyprogesterone acetate in 50% of uh, cases, magistral acetate and uh, levonorgestrel IUD. No standard dose regime and duration of treatment so far. The dosage reported in the literature is MPA from 100 to 800 mg daily and in magistral acetate 40 to 160 mg daily. The duration of treatment ranging from 3 to 9 months and the frequency of follow-up following treatment is 1 to 3 monthly and with average of 3 monthly. In recent review, overall response rate evaluated by 3 monthly endometrial biopsy for MPA and magistral was 73%. The initial response can be as early as one month with a medium time of four to six months. Relapse rate was reported up to 36% in medium follow-up of 22 months. MPA and magistral have comparable efficacy but recurrence rate was higher with magistral. Overall, 35 to 40% of good responders successfully conceived and 50% of pregnancy was achieved by assisted reproductive techniques. Potential side effects of progestin, uh, thrombophilobitis, weight gain, headache, sleep disorders, leg cramps, and mood and libido changes. How about the IUCD impregnated progestin? There are two most common products. One is Merina and second is Families. As compared to oral progestin, data of IUCD impregnated progestogen is still limited. Complete response rate was reported from 40 to 100 percent in premenopausal women. As on how to obtain the endometrial sample during assessment, a study has shown that it is sufficient to obtain endometrial sample using PPL sampler with IUCD in situ. So I think the role of IUCD impregnated progestin is promising in the future. 
but more studies should be done and perhaps higher dosage of progesterone should be added to the device. The other uh, important issue in, is how to assess the response to treatment by histologic evaluation and how to follow up this patient. What is the histologic features of complete response? Ideally, a complete response should be defined as when the repeat biopsy reported as negative or hormonal effect. Unfortunately, there was, uh, however, no standard definition of complete response. Some consider hyperplasia without ETP is a complete response. In this respect, I think using EIN system of reporting will be better than WHO classification of individual hyperplasia. How frequent should we follow up uh, patient during treatment? Frequency of follow-up varies from 1 to 3 monthly, but more gynecologists oncologists prefer 3 monthly. When should we refer patient for fertility treatment? Generally, if the patient came to conceive as soon as possible, we should refer them immediately to reproductive medicine specialist because the duration of remain in remission after successful progestin therapy always cannot be predicted. Women not planning to attempt pregnancy immediately after a complete response should be placed on maintenance progestin therapy. Patient who is not on fertility treatment must be treated with maintenance dose of progestogen either in oral form or as IUCD impregnated progestogen because this practice can lower the risk of recurrence. Women with persistent or progression of disease after 6 to 9 month treatment should be considered as resistant to hormonal treatment. So what are the oncology and reproductive outcomes of conservative treatment with hormonal therapy for early endometrial cancer? Gunderson CC et al. did a systemic review involving 45 studies and they found that the overall response rate was 78%. Complete response rate was for endometrial carcinoma was only 48.2% with medium time to complete response was 6 months. Recurrent rate was uh, 35% and persistent disease in 25%. Pregnancy rate was 34.8%. This study, however, did not analyze the efficacy of individual hormone, so the results seem to be lower than expected. In, an in another meta-analysis by Baker J. et al. on the efficacy of oral and IUD-delivered progestin, they had found that complete response rate for oral progestin was 72% and relapse rate of 20%. The number of sample of IUD de delivered progestin was too small to make any conclusion, although the complete response rate was reported as 68%. Based on several analyses, including both studies presented in previous slide, it was shown that the risk factor for recurrent and treatment failure was obesity with BMI of more than 25 if patient remain infertile, no maintenance dose, using progestin other than MPA, and in some study, patient with an overexpression of molecular markers known as phospho-AKT and phosphatase was associated with higher failure rate. I have mentioned earlier that we will offer definitive surgical treatment if the disease failed to progress or if it progressed after 6 to 9 month treatment. Even in patients who had complete response and subsequently completed their family, it is strongly recommended that the patient is offered a standard treatment because recurrence rate is still high of up to 40%. In surgery, uterus and both ovaries are removed. Preserving the ovaries during hysterectomy is controversial because of theoretical risk of recurrence due to continuous estrogen stimulation from the refunctioning ovaries. Although SEER have shown that Preserving the ovaries during surgical treatment of stage 1 endometrial cancer had no effect on cancer-specific or overall survival among women aged less than 45. 50% of synchronous endometrial and ovarian cancer have normal-looking ovaries at the time of surgery. Therefore, removing the ovaries is strongly recommended. At present, we do not have standard protocol for conservative hormonal treatment in early endometrial cancer because it is not a standard treatment which rarely offered to patients. However, as I have mentioned earlier, 
In the future, we are going to see more patients with early endometrial cancer that keen to preserve their fertility. Therefore, it is in this presentation I would like to propose treatment protocol based on what we have discussed earlier. The next few slides are actually my suggestion. Hopefully, with standard guideline, it could assist us in standardizing the treatment, facilitate research and audit activities. If the patient is referred with endometrial cancer based on sample taken by PPEL, I would personally think that we should repeat the biopsy by endometrial curatage. DNC is the gold standard. The histology should be reviewed by experienced pathologists and receptor status should be done. Do a baseline investigation including CA125 and chest X3. I will do a transvaginal ultrasound scan as an additional imaging with MRI. Contrast enhanced MRI should be evaluated by an experienced radiologist. After we have performed and evaluated all this pre-treatment diagnostic workup, then we will decide whether this patient is uh, an eligible candidate for conservative hormonal treatment. The patient should be managed by a team comprises of gynae oncologists, radiologists, histopathologists and reproductive medicine specialists. Once we have identified a suitable candidate, thorough counseling must be done prior to treatment. In the yellow box, I have listed eight important information that we must convey to patients during counseling. Number one, we must inform them that this is not a standard treatment. The response rate is only 60 to 80 percent. Recurrence rate up, up can be up to 35 percent. In 40% of cases, they, they still require the hysterectomy. Even if achieve complete response, only 35-40% to 40 will successfully conceive. The rest remain infertile. The patient should also be counseled that they, that they require a close monitoring during the, and after the treatment. The patient should be acknowledged about the side effect and progestin. And uh, last but not least, patient must understand her long-term management. They have to be followed up sim similar to other cancer patients. They require maintenance therapy and despite of remission, they may have to undergo definitive surgical treatment when they have completed their family. Once the counseling has been completed, if patient agreeable, take the consent and we will proceed with progestin therapy. If patient decline, then we will offer her standard surgical treatment. As for progestin therapy, high dose MPA is the treatment of choice. I will start her on 100 mg daily, but may consider higher dose in obese patients up to 300 mg daily. I will call her in one month to assess any side effect and I will repeat TVS to assess the endometrium because studies have shown that the response to hormonal treatment could be seen as early as one month after initial of the treatment. There will be no endometrial biopsy done, but a appointment for repeat MRI and endometrial curatage will be made during this visit. So the next follow-up is three months. MRI will be done a week before and she will be admitted for repeated endometrial curatage. MRI and repeat histology result will be reviewed. If she was found to have response well to treatment, subsequent endometrial sampling will be done by PPEL because at this moment, the benefit of endometrial curatage has to be weighed against the risk of repeat curatage, in particularly in causing the intrauterine adhesion and damage to the uterine lining, leading to failed implantation and reduced success rate, success rate of subsequent fertility treatment. If the response uh, to treatment if she responds to treatment, she will continue with the same dose of MPA until on a six month where repeat assessment will be done. If she doesn't respond, progestin dose will be increased and she will be given appointment three months later. At a six months follow-up, full assessment will be done including repeat endometrial biopsy and MRI. Therefore, MRI and endometrial biopsy are done three monthly. During the follow-up at six months, if she has completed complete response and at the same time she has desire for urgent conception, she will be referred to reproductive medicine specialist immediately. No delay in fertility treatment. 
Otherwise, otherwise, if she is no, she has, if there is no urgency to conceive, she will be started on low dose progesterone as a maintenance therapy until she decided to conceive. If she was found to have persistent or progression of disease during six month follow up, she will advise for definitive treatment. In the other hand, if she fall under partial response, where endometrial biopsy reported as endometrial hyperplasia with atypia or EIN. I will increase the dose of progesterone and give her another three months and then treat accordingly as I have mentioned earlier. At six months, if the repeat histology remains as endometrial hyperplasia with atypia or ERN, I will discuss with her and may consider as failed treatment. What about repeating hormonal treatment in patients who develop recurrent following conservative treatment? In almost all cases of recurrence, patients will be offered standard surgical treatment. However, there may be women that still insist to maintain the reproductive function. Repeat hormonal treatment to this category of patients have been reported, but the data is limited, and therefore this approach is not recommended, but it is not totally unacceptable. Park et al. reported retreatment of 33 patients with recurrent disease, an achieved response rate of 85% with durable response rate of 85% over a medium follow-up of 4 years plus, uh, roughly about 52 months. Patients who fail to respond or who has progression of disease should be offered total abdominal hysterectomy. The issue of ovarian preservation during hysterectomy is debatable. In surgery for endometrial carcinoma, uterus and both ovaries are often removed. Preserving the ovaries during hysterectomy is controversial because of theoretical risk of recurrence due to continuous estrogen stimulation from the ovaries. Surveillance epidemiology and end result SEER, have shown that preserving the ovaries during surgical treatment of stage 1 endometrial cancer had no effect on cancer-specific or overall survival among women aged less than 45. However, bearing in mind that 15% of synchronous endometrial and ovarian cancer have normal looking ovaries at the time of surgery. Therefore, removing the ovaries is strongly recommended, especially if patient is above 40 years old. What about other method of conservative treatment? Choi et al. had uh, reported using photodynamic therapy with light sensitive compound for 16 young patients with early endometrial cancer. The initial response rate was 75% and recurrence rate of 33%. So in conclusion, conservative treatment for early endometrial cancer is not a standard treatment. Hormonal treatment using progestin is the only acceptable conservative medical treatment for fertility preservation. Conservative surgical treatment has limited data and only acceptable if combined with hormonal therapy. Patient must be managed by multidisciplinary team comprises of kinetic oncologists, reproductive medicine specialists, experienced radiologists and pathologists. Thorough pre-treatment workup with adequate counseling must be done to select the suitable patient. Endometrial curatage is the, is the procedure of choice for the diagnosis of endometrial carcinoma and contrast enhanced MRI is the imaging of choice for radiological staging. Selection of patient is the most critical and must be done thoroughly. In considering the modality of treatment, safety, efficacy, and no adverse effect to future fertility is the most important factors. Thank you very much for your attention.